Hi, Ed Diaz here. In today's video, we're going to learn where to find drivers, support docs, and updates for the Roland Phantom O. All right, let's get started. So on occasion, you're going to need help with, you know, uh, support documents and drivers, how to get things to talk to the computer, and also future updates. So where do I go for that? Where can I go find all of these things that I'm going to need? Well, let's take a look here now. So I can go to Roland.com, and depending on where you are in the world, it will take you to your regional Roland, where you have it for your country or your part of the world. So Right there, I'm at Roland.com, and I'm already here. So now all I need to do is go ahead and go to Products and to Synthesizers. Let's go right here. And then I just need to go into Performance Workstation. And this is where the Phantom O lives. So I'll choose that. We see the flagship Phantoms, and here we see the Phantom O's. Now, I can choose any one of these Phantoms here, the 6, the 7, or the 8, 61, 76, or 88, the specs and the drivers and everything are all the same. So I'm going to choose the 76. And then if we look right here, we see specs, accessories, downloads, and support. This is where we want to go. So let's go first off into downloads right there. It's going to take me directly to this page. And if you take a look at this page, uh, we see pretty much everything we need there for the drivers and also updates. So I'll go ahead and zoom in for you real quick. We can take a look together. Uh, currently right now we have the update. We have the system program is version 1.01. .01. There has not been an update for the Phantom O, but here is the first one there just in case you need it. Uh, I would suggest downloading it. I have it um, on my uh, files just in case, but uh, we should be good. We see sample converters there for Windows and Mac OS. If you need some help here. Now we get into the drivers for Windows. Windows and Windows is pretty cool. Windows uh, 10 and I believe 11 will automatically find drivers for you. So that's pretty cool. Now on the Macs, you need to definitely make sure you have the correct operating system. And if you're not sure to do that, and what, this video isn't about that, but I'll go ahead and show you since we're here. I'm going to go to about this Mac. And then uh, let me pull this screen over. In my Mac, it will tell me that I am running Big Sur. 11.2.3 so if i was looking for the drivers for that uh here we go drivers for mac 11 so that's what it's telling me there that we can have that there so that's where i would find my drivers for my particular mac uh right here and that's how you do that uh next we go into the control surface plugins for logic and also the profile for main stage so just on this one download section that had a lot of good information for us this is where we would find our updates and our driver so this just keep this in here maybe save it uh, on your computer a link to this particular web page so that way when a new update or drivers are available for the phantom O, you can find them now let's take a look at support documents let's go to support okay so if we take a look at the support area we have a lot of really cool things there and i want to go ahead and take a look at some of these manuals that are in here uh very good documents so i'm going to go ahead and open these up in different tabs so we can take a quick peek at them all right so these are always really good to have and to look at and i actually put this in my ipad and i'll read them uh there so this is pretty cool so let's go to the first one right now uh, agree and let's download the file real fast all right so this is the main one i look at this one almost daily especially when i get a new synthesizer i'll start going through it now you don't have to read the whole thing at, at one time but it is a good idea it will uh, answer some common questions and there might be things in there with, that when you figure it out it opens a whole new set of doors for you and this is how i learn a lot of my things in here that i do so Right in here, this is the basic owner's manual. We'll go ahead and zoom in so you guys can uh, see. Uh, you know, talks about, you know, editing a zone, editing effects, sampler. Just really gives you a nice basic knowledge of what's going on in here. So I always encourage you, download the manual, read the manual, and kind of get it going, you know. And there's going to be questions, but that's why uh, myself and other uh, Roland product specialists are here to kind of help you out. But always uh, have that. It's in a digital form, so you can download it, and you can put it into any of your iPad or other kind of uh, iOS or different devices. So you can go in there. Uh, let's take a look at the next one, uh, a reference manual. 
this is also a good one to have. And we start getting into some other um, more nerd stuff. Okay, so the owner's manual was great, but this one really helps you dig in a little bit deeper to certain things. So let's go into the reference manual here. There we go, downloaded. And let's go in here. Now we can start digging into uh, a lot of the different uh, settings and parameters that you might not uh, know that you need. Okay, so our, here's one talking about playing arpeggios, playing chords, rhythm patterns, okay, learning about the sliders and the knobs, you know, so a lot of different things in here. So this is going to give you a lot of key information. So the owner, owner's manual is good, but now we start getting into the reference manual where, where we can start really digging in. In. Okay, so a lot, I know a lot of people are into editing a zine, scene. Let's go ahead and choose that real quick so you can see. And the manuals have gotten a lot better over the years where you actually see screenshots of what things do. And it really leads you through there. So it's it's almost as good as, or I think it's actually better than the video at times because you can really dig in there. And if you have an, a device where you can download and kind of take notes on the unit, on the on the screen that could be really really cool here so th this is the reference manual i love this manual uh i read through it a lot and if you see mine i have a lot of questions or comments or things written in there as annoyed uh what is it annotated so that way i can kind of go back and kind of reference things there so that's the reference manual take a look at that one now we go into the parameter guide this is also good um, a lot of good stuff in here as well we'll go into here take a look parameter guide. here we go we start learning, for instance, uh, the generals about the scene. What does this stuff mean? Uh, what does it go? I love this one that talks about the effects. Okay, so say I take a look at the chorus. I can see the type of a chorus. Look, it tells me what editing parameters are on there for me. So this is really helps you get in there and kind of nerd out in a fun way. Look at the CE1. tells you it's about the classic CE1 uh boss effect and uh, see the parameters that are available for it right in here and you can really dig into the unit and get more out of it that's ultimately what we want in here uh, this is really cool look you can have the juno 106 chorus and look you can have it make the amount of noise that the juno 106 was known for and that's in your phantom o uh, available let's go back to the contents so a lot of different things in here Go through these slowly. Have fun with them. Uh, read these when you're just, uh, you know, you're bored. Just kind of just having fun. And, and just read a little bit at a time because the great thing about this is you could find something uh, that you didn't know and you go to your phantom and now it opens up a whole new can of worms that can be a lot, a lot of fun. All right. So this is this is real cool. Uh, real quick, zone, uh, Zencore, we see the common things that are in here. You can learn about the different things you can do in here, like coarse tuning, fine tuning, octave up. You can really get in there. All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, now, this one's a good one also. Talk about DAW integration. A uh, great thing about the Phantom O and the flagship Phantom is that we can integrate it with the DAWs and actually use it as an audio MIDI interface for any DAW out there. As long as we have the drivers in here and uh, set this guy up either either to generic or to vendor, vendor for audio, generic for MIDI only, we can go ahead and have that going. So this one is definitely a good one to get you going to learn how to control logic and main stage. It doesn't tell you about GarageBand, but this also works with GarageBand for those of you that are new to recording. So definitely get this going. Also, it sees there, it talks about uh, Ableton Live, get you going. And th this is the kind of things that I look at so I can learn and then I can share it with you in videos. I always use these all the time. So really take a look at these and kind of have fun with the process of learning. You know, your keyboard, the flagship Phantom and the Phantom O can do so much. You just need to learn how to communicate uh, with the unit, with this instrument, this advanced instrument, and you're going to get so much more out of it. All right, let's go on to the next one. Okay, here we go. The sound list. Okay, this one is good because, of course, you can see all the different sounds that are available inside the Zen Core, and we see some supernatural stuff. Now, one thing that you uh, might take for granted, you see like, Ed, what is, what is all this stuff? Well, look at this. Inside this particular scene list, we see MSB, LSB, and program change number. This lets you know the MIDI address of the scene. So if you wanted to have 
Another master keyboard changed the scenes in your Phantom via MIDI over MIDI over regular uh, five uh, five pin cable or uh, USB. These are the address. And you in the advanced videos, you'll hear me and I'll teach you about uh, going sending program changes uh, of the Phantom or to main stage. And that these are the numbers that all keyboards use. Uh, MSB. LSB program change number. So most significant bit and least significant bit and program change. So that's what that is. So those are for the scenes. This gives you all the physical addresses of the scenes. Plus, you can go ahead and change that. Now, keep in mind, even if you were to go in here and let's say this this particular uh, scene, you went in there and you deleted that scene and you created a whole new scene, this number, the B04, and then also the MSB, LSB, and program change numbers will always be constant. So that's kind of cool. And then you see here there's the scene memo. Of course, you can go in there and edit the scenes and put your own memo. So this is actually a, a really good document for those of you that want to get into there and adjust the scenes. But if we go further, you can actually see all the preset uh, tones that are available. Notice each tone has its own has its own MSB, LSB, and program change number. So you can go ahead and have um, computers change your different tones and the zones in the Phantom via the MIDI uh, MIDI channels or, or the zones. And these are the numbers that you would need. For, so for those of you that like to do a little bit more advanced MIDI stuff, have things change automatically, or you want to change things, uh, this is where you would go. This is just a great one that's overlooked. And let's take a quick peek at the back. And there's a ton of sounds. You know, remember with your Phantom O, uh, over, I believe it's over 4,000 sounds. Now, I just went to the back uh, area of it. And, you know, you, same thing. Uh, you see all of your different uh, sound lists for your different rhythms in here. I uh, see uh, rhythm kits and particular sounds. Here we go. Supernatural, a lot of different stuff. It even tells you uh, what's available. You can go ahead and make notes in here uh, what's available for that particular Supernatural, what kind of articulations. If we go further, we see the drum key uh, assignment list. So you can actually see, depending on uh, the kit you use, what is on each of those kits. This is pretty cool. So you can go ahead and make notes in here and have some fun with it. And there's a bunch of them here. You see me scrolling on here a lot of different kits and uh, don't forget you can go in here and create your own custom drum kit well uh, once we get into that and you take the time uh, and the care to do that you can really have some really really cool sounds now here's another fun one in here the waveform list these are the waveforms that actually make up the tones so a lot of different ones in here you could look through these if you really wanted to keep get deep down into sound design and these are the partials, the waveforms that live within the partials that make the tones. So we can do that there. A lot of good information. And I would keep on going further. And I think that's it for there. So you see a lot of information uh, within this sound list. So download all of these. This is cool. Let's look at this last one right here. Uh, MIDI implementation. Now, this is big time MIDI nerd stuff. But this one might be good for you to look at, too. Now, a lot of times we look at this and I'm like, I'm like, we don't, I don't understand this hexadecimal kind of stuff that's going on, Ed. All right, no problem. Check this out. This is a great, let me see, yeah, this and this. I can't, can, I'll, I'll just focus on this one. This is a great one because this is a good recipe for how to change sounds within the Phantom. Oh, this first section right here are all the scenes. This are all the scenes. So this lets you know uh, then that the numbers, the MSB, LSB, and program change numbers, you need to change sound. So if you wanted to have, uh, a, like I said, another master keyboard change stuff, or you want to have a doll like uh, maybe a doll like Logic or Ableton or anything else, send program changes over USB to your Phantom and change your scenes live as the the uh, the song is playing. This is how you would do it, and uh, these are the numbers you would need. Same thing if you wanted main stage to change your sounds of your Phantom as you go into the main stage concert and change patches. You could have it send program changes, change the entire scene, or change individual tones within the scene. So very very cool stuff. So I love looking at all this stuff right here. Same thing. Uh, I moved it down. 
for, for drum kits also. So this is a lot of really cool information here. And then it gets into uh, the stuff that even, I don't even understand. I'm like, whoa, this is a big time programming stuff. But this is all available for you to kind of look at, take what you need, and uh, it's all there for you. So once again, all of that information is available to you to, from the Roland website. Make sure and check that out. Go ahead and take a look at the Roland website. There's a lot of different support things here. Also for support, you can go to a knowledge base right here. For a lot of your common questions, you can go ahead and hit knowledge base. You can search a particular question and the article will probably come up right here. So you can learn even more stuff. And then if you need to, you can get email support just by pressing this tab right here that says email support. You just go ahead and click that button and then you can go ahead and put your email right there and go in there. And so you can ask direct questions this way. Also, if you need to get anything fixed, you can go to service and repair and you can use service uh, center locator and all you have to do is just put your zip code. Whoops. All you have to do is put your zip code and that, that way it will find you an authorized role of service center there. So anyway, that was just a side note uh, right there. So once again, if you need help finding drivers, uh, future op operating system OSs, or support documents, this is where you go. Just go to those, win those windows and you will find everything you need. And download everything you can. All of those documents that I showed you, some of them don't make sense to you right now, but take your time. Read a section at a time and really enjoy the learning process and really learn how to harness and utilize your Phantom O to the fullest. All right, I hope this video really helps you out. You guys take care, and we'll talk to you later.